today we're going to talk about recording your um, lecture using Canvas Studio. When you're in Canvas, you'll notice on the left bar, red bar menu there's a Studio link. We're not going to use that link. That hosts, hosts all your videos for all of your classes. I recommend going into a particular class and um, when you're in a particular class, there'll be a studio link on the left menu. So before you get started in studio, um, before you record any new lectures, I re recommend several things. A, bring up your PowerPoint first, so that way it's ready to go um, when you do your recording. Second, you'll always want to use Chrome. It seems to upload the items faster and better than Firefox, in my experience. Third, you'll want to keep your video short. Students don't want to listen to a two-hour lecture um, on a video. You don't want to listen to a two-hour lecture on a video. So if you can keep them 15, 20 minutes long, um, that would be better. Uh, if you can't keep it 15, 20 minutes long, I can't, I try. Um, 30 minutes is good. As long as they're under an hour, um, the, the it'll be better because anything over an hour may have trouble streaming for your students. They'll have trouble being engaged and watching the video. And thirdly, um, you'll have trouble uploading it because it's a big file. So keep your video short. Uh, and then the fourth thing I recommend doing before you click the record button is doing a fresh reboot on your computer. Refresh its system, um, you know, shut it down, bring it back up, it'll be ready to go, there won't be any confusion or issues. Before I talk about recording a new video, I wanted to let you know that Canvas Studio also lets you add videos. So if you like to record your videos in Camtasia or you have uh, MP4 files or files, you can just send them up here uh, by just dragging them dropping on there. I've dropped 15, 20 videos and just uh, let them upload. You'll want to have a good high-speed connection when you do that. It'll take a while um, depending on your internet connection to upload. You can also add YouTube URLs and these are nice because um, it allows students to add comments to videos. So you can see here in my speech class um, this is an example of uh, a speech of introduction, a speech of accepting award here. A speech of entertainment. Uh, this is a toast and this is a speech of encouragement. So the students can actually, if I go to modules, they can actually watch these um, sample speeches here and if you notice when I add them to the module, and I'll scroll down, because it's a YouTube video in my studio, I have all these options. I can see who's using insights, who watched the videos, um, and the students made comments on these videos and you can see that the comments are bubbling up right about here. So um, YouTube videos are nice to to put into your studio. Okay so let's get to what we wanted to talk about recording a video. Uh, when you click the record button it gives you two options you can do a regular screen capture which is what we're gonna do because we want to capture the PowerPoint or you can do a webcam a video. If you notice here, the student is giving her speech. I record my student's speech and it's just the webcam. It's not like these here are um, screen captures. So we're going to do a screen capture and when I hit record, the first time you use it, it's going to want to download a plugin. Um, I've already downloaded it, so I'm going to open the plugin. And while I'm waiting for that to come up, let me close out my um, will not close, minimize my Chrome window because that's not what I want to record. I will actually want to record my PowerPoint. So you can see that I have these little lines here to stretch my window. I'm going to um, you know, get my PowerPoint on here, get the, the screen on it very well. For those of you who plan to go into your classroom, and use the document camera. On the desktop of the classroom, there's a little icon in which you can click on the document camera and, and once that window is up, you would take your Canvas Studio window and outline that document camera. Regarding the PowerPoint, some of you might be asking, why don't you go into full screen? 
Well, the recording doesn't go so well that way because I lose my recording button down here if I, I'm full screen. It doesn't capture it that well. And I feel like I have more control over clicking through the next things. The students will only see what's in this window. All right, so when I'm ready, um, I might have to check my mic. Um, if I click this little area, it, I can choose a different microphone, but the mic I have is good. Um, so I'll cancel out of there. Um, and I want to get both the screen and the webcam, so both is selected. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit the record button. It'll count down for me, and then I can start going through my lecture. Um, I will have a little window up here. Normally you would see your face in the, vi the video. Um, I have a couple of things going on here, so you don't see my face, but you will. And as I go through my lecture, I can see on the left menu here, I can click on uh, these items to go through it. In my mouse, whoops, if I hover my mouse on certain areas and move around, um, later when we watch this, you'll see that there's a little yellow circle so the students will know what I'm talking about. And I can go through all of my slides and give my lecture. When I'm finished, at the bottom here, I can hit the pause button. I can see how long my video is. Um, if I wanted to pause and then change to you know, another screen, I can pick back up on my video by hitting record again. It'll give me the countdown again. And I can talk to my students about something else. And then when I'm done, I'll hit pause again. So now that my video's done, we're looking at this bar down here. I can click trash to trash it or click done. Give it a title. Uh, chapter 6, lecture, and click upload. So this will take a little bit of time. The longer the video, the longer it takes. And when it's done, I'll hit continue. And now, if I go back to studio for my course, I'll see my new video right here. Um, there's other things that you can do we're not going to talk about in this video, but you can add quizzes or lectures. Uh, you can also, while you're delivering your video, if you pause for a moment and ask the students a question as if you were in a real classroom, students can respond to those. So I'll talk in another uh, video on how to make your videos interactive later, um, but I want to show you a sample, let's see, week six. I had to do two um, lectures here. And on this one, I embedded a quiz. On this one, I merely asked the students questions as I was giving my lecture. Oh, this one's the quiz, sorry. I got them backwards. This one, I asked them questions. And what was neat about it is you can see the blue dots where they're giving their responses. If I go there and click play, you'll hear me right, talking. Right, which pattern you're using for your concept. You can see my students' responses. Okay, so you should have paused um, this and made your comment, and now we'll move on to the next slide. So if you do that when you're delivering your speech recording, you can see that several times through my 25-minute um, lecture, the students had a chance to interact. So if you scroll down on your Canvas Studio, I can edit the details of my, my lecture, which is basically the name. I can look at all the students' comments that they made in detail, and they responded to the question I asked them throughout the lecture. Um, I can turn on captions for my um, lecture. I basically, um, this one I've already turned them on, but I basically say I want English and then request captions. It'll take a little bit of time and it will add captions for me. And then finally on insights, I can see who actually watched my video and who did not. So I can see the student did, uh, the student didn't, and this student watched parts of my lecture video. So that's studio and um, later in the next video, I will show you how to add quiz questions to your studio video.